It's a warm spring Sunday at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Richmond. As the minister is about to present Holy Communion, a tall, well-dressed black man sitting in the section reserved for African Americans unexpectedly advances to the communion rail. Unexpectedly, because this has never happened here before. And everyone paused. This was literally turning the heavens upside down for the Southerners. It was one thing for them to have lost the war. It was another thing for them to have had their country laid waste to, but for their very traditions to be turned upside down in their own homes or in their own churches, this was really too much. The congregation freezes. Those who have been ready to go forward and kneel at the communion rail remain fixed in their pews. The minister stands in his place stunned and motionless. The black man, slowly lowers his body, kneeling at the communion rail. I mean, the war answered some things. It killed slavery. But what was left unanswered was how is the United States going to work out a biracial society? We are still struggling with that. After what seems an interminable amount of time, an older white man rises, his hair snowy white, head up, and eyes proud. He walks quietly up the aisle to the chancel rail. And he was a man who had only recently said, I am penniless and I am homeless, and I have nothing left to live for. Yet this was also a man who many Southerners looked to for guidance and for wisdom as to what to do next. So with silent dignity and self-possession, the white man kneels down to take communion along the same rail with the black man. It's an important public gesture to show that it's all over, parishioners, and, and this is, this is part of the new world that we'll be living in. And when Robert E. Lee knelt down next to this black man with a sort of mixture of hope and expectation, he was saying, this is what the future of the United States should be. This is what our legacy of April 1865 should be. Lee has said he is rejoiced that slavery is dead. But this action indicates that those were not idle words meant to placate a Northern audience. Here among his people, he leads wordlessly through example. The other communicants slowly move forward to the altar with a mixture of reluctance and fear, hope and awkward expectation. In the end, America would defy the cruel chain of history besetting nations torn apart by civil war.